What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. Y'all hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. So as y'all know, a lot of my topics come from um, a lot of my topics come from social media postings, etc. Right? And so I saw a young lady. She was on Facebook, and she basically said, I think it was Facebook or Twitter, when she was saying that black romantic comedies don't hit as hard as the white romantic comedies. She felt like the white romantic comedy movies are much more interesting. The storylines, the plots are much more, um, you can get more invested in the plots than they than, than you can in the black romantic comedies, right? And so I said, you know what? I'm going to take the time out to make my list of my favorite, my top 10 favorite romantic comedy movies. Now, what's crazy is I'm not a big romance film watcher. I'm not. I like a lot of sports movies, action movies, comedies, um, th things that like coming of age stories. I like movies that like tell like life lessons in it and stuff like that but i'm really not a big love movie watcher but i will say from making this list i come to find out that i really i really am into romantic comedies because i love majority of the movies on this list i really do really really love them <clears throat> okay so number 10 for me is jumping the broom the movie star paula Patton, laz alonzo uh loretta divine angela bassett megan good mike epps and the movie had a lot of different interesting aspects to it. It talks about a man learning to um, keep his mother out of his marriage, out of his relationship. Um, you saw the dynamic of two families intermingling, mixing to get coming together. Families from two different sides of life. One from a more struggling, poverty-stricken side, growing up, had it more harsh. One from a family, one side of the family was well-to-do. They were affluent, you know, and those cultures those, those families were mixing together and coming as one and then they had family secrets involved and all of that so i think it was a really great watch number nine for me is think like a man y'all know the movie that's derived from the book that steve harvey wrote some people feel like steve didn't write the book or whatever but whatever right you know starring the usual suspects kevin hart michael ely taraji p henson terence j uh Re regina hall who i love i love regina that's my girlfriend Chief Regina, 50-something years old, finer than a ticket on a dashboard. You hear me? But anyway, um, Romany Malco, who I really enjoy in movies like A 40-Year-Old Virgin, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think the movie was very interesting. Uh, a lot of different twists on dating and relationships and, and, and what to do and what not to do when dating certain people and certain, uh, certain lifestyles or whatever. Uh, really, really interesting movie. Funny, too. Deliver Us from Eva, number eight. <clears throat> Yo. I love Deliver Us from Eva. Um, this is, I think this is Gabrielle Union's, well, now she was in Breaking All the Rules, but in this, she was yeah with Jamie Foxx, but that didn't really get a lot of like acclaim within our community at the box office or nothing, right? But um, I think this is really Gabrielle Union's first standalone film where she is the lead, the lead actress. Her and LL Cool J are the lead in the movie, and yo, when they talk about her being a hard-ass woman, a hard-ass heifer, <laughs> she is a she is really really like a mean spirited woman for real and she got all this bitterness built up within her from bad relationships and all of that and um she got a rough exterior then you see them hire ll cool j to come date her to kind of like keep them the, the other because she has sisters and her brother-in-laws are trying to find her somebody to keep them out of their mess and out of their business, right? So they hire LL Cool J. LL Cool J ends up falling for her, even though he was hired to just run game on her and, and you know, and break her heart so she can learn how to stop being mean and she can go through heartbreak herself and learn, you know, how to let up, let up off of them, et cetera, right? And he ends up falling for her. So it's a really dope movie and a lot of funny parts, right? Uh, starring Gabrielle Union, Essence Atkins, who... Essence Atkins, I love tough. I'm a smart guy and stuff, right? Um, what's my boy? Again, LL Cool J, etc. Um, then you got Love and Basketball at number seven. So um, some people probably would think it would be higher on my list. I really enjoy Love and Basketball, but it's not my all-time favorite. But I really enjoyed it. People are giving it flack now because of, you know, I guess how harsh Qu uh, Quincy treated Monica in the movie, right? Especially at the end when she's spilling her heart to him. And she's trying to play him, play him in basketball because she still want him and she miss him and she loves him. And he really trying to beat her at the end. Right. But um, I think the coming of age, them growing together and, and growing to love each other from being starting from being best friends through the sport of basketball and how um, her love for basketball diminished because it was always connected to Quincy. 
which is a really dope plot. You know what I mean? And how, you know, she stopped playing ball when she realized that her and Quincy would never be together. And she just was like, it's time for me to just come home and live a regular life. And then the end, you see her and Quincy get back together. She go to the WNBA. He in the, he in the crowd with their daughter cheering, like, cheering uh, Monica on, which is it's a beautiful ending, right? Number six for me is the brothers. Starting D.L. Hughley, Bill Bellamy, Morris Chestnut, Shamar Moore. Funny as hell. From D.L. Hughley trying to get his wife to perform fellatio, <laughs> fellatio on, on him, and she refusing to do it with... First of all, Tamala Jones is his wife. She's so fine. <laughs> I love Tamala Jones. Y'all remember Tamala Jones from Booty Call back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Um, Tamala Jones. Um, you had... Uh, I'm trying to think who else was in that movie. But, oh, Clifton Powell. He was the daddy, and his father used to date uh, Morris Chester. He was Morris Chester's father in the film, and he used to date his woman that he was recently about to get with, right? <laughs> so you see the aspects of that. Really, really fun movie uh, describing the brotherhood of men while they're going through the spot, they're going through life and involve, evolving and getting married, etc. Number five for me is Two Can Play That Game. Vivica Fox in her prime was, oh my God, top tier. That's why when 50 pulled her, I was clapping for that brother. Because I, I used as a kid, a young man, I used to watch this movie and be fantasizing about Vivica in ways she probably would never imagine. All right? But uh, you see the aspect of two, two, a man and a woman. It's a battle with a sexist movie. They're trying to run game on each other. They're really in love with each other, but they're trying to... It's a movie built on pride and how pride in relationships can cause things to get worse and worse and worse. Because two people refuse to communicate openly and, and honestly and they try to do all these little game plan and and you know their friends get involved anthony anderson is in morris chestnut's ear morris chestnut is keith and all of that did you see the debut of gabrielle union in there with the long hair i forgot her name was connie or something like that in the movie i think and gabrielle was fine in there so i really i really love two can play the game number four for me is the best man um what can i say about this movie again uh Brotherhood, a movie about black men and brotherhood, and you see a one man who's henpecked with his wife, one dude who refuses to commit to a woman, one dude who was a player, an athlete all his life, and then, you know, eventually he wanted to be with his woman and settle down. Um, then you have Terrence. Terrence Howard was doing whatever he wanted to do, following his passion. He really wasn't. He wanted to just sleep with women and follow his passion. And he was the he was the dude that can stir stuff up in the friend group, right? Then you felt you find out that um Tate Diggs, <clears throat> Tate Diggs used to be the leading man in Hollywood, black Hollywood for sure. But Tate Diggs, um, he ended up previously while, you know, when they were younger, he slept with his best friend's woman, I think while they were on a break or something like that. And he put it in a book. It was so silly for him to do that. And you see how that unfolds and the drama that comes with that. But the acting is great in there. And it's just, man, I love that movie. Number three, uh, I think I love my wife. I'm not even a big Chris Rock fan, but y'all, that movie dope. It talks about a man who's been married to a woman and living a, what do they call it, monotonous life. Is that the word I'm looking for? He just live a regular routine life. Uh, he's just a husband and he is a, a worker. He provides and he's a husband. His, him and his wife don't have sex that much because she's really not in the mood a lot. They have small children and he loses himself within a marriage at a point. He meets a young lady, Carrie Washington. This is the finest I've ever seen Carrie Washington look. I ain't never really been attracted to Carrie Washington, but in I, in I Think I Love My Wife, that movie, she was fine. But anyway, um, he meets this woman, and she introduces him to new music, all different type of things, and fun, exhilarating experiences. But then she, she pulls out at times, right? She leaves him hanging at times, and he's trying to see her, and he leaves, she leaves him hanging, and, and he's longing for her attention even though he sometimes act like he don't want it at the end he realizes that he needs to be with his wife and needs to stay committed to his family and it was the right when he was about to have sex with the girl and he stops and he goes back home and runs back home to his wife which is a good moral of, moral, uh, moral of the story situation number two for me would have to be boomerang eddie murphy um uh halle berry um what's old girl name man um uh, robin givens yeah, like John Witherspoon, David Allen Greer. Man, what? Boomerang is special. Hey, first of all, it, Boomerang is so special. The soundtrack is cold. Remember when movies had a soundtrack? The sound, people, people would make songs with a soundtrack for solely for movies. 
And that's when they had that, uh, what's my Johnny Gill song? There you go, there you go, there you go, and here I come. Listen, if I could sing, boy, y'all be in trouble out here. Uh, what? If I could sing, brother, y'all would be in trouble. But anyway, number one for me uh, is Brown Sugar. Listen, that is one of the most beautiful movies about love, black love, that I've seen as far as like the plot, the storyline, how they grew up off hip hop. And I'm a hip hop head, so something about that movie, it keeps me intrigued. We got the hip hop legend, Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick up in there. Then you got Tay Diggs as the lead, Sanaa Lathan as the other lead. You got Queen Latifah, Most Def. Boris Kojo, his wife, and Nicole Ari Parker. Um, yeah, man, they it, it centers on their love, how these friends fell in love through their love of hip-hop, and how they always stay connected through hip-hop, but they always were in love with each other, and they realize it while they're dating other people. When one is getting ready to get engaged, or getting one, one is getting ready to get married, and the other one finds love, but they love each other, and they get pulled together. So that is my list of black romantic comedies.